What's going on guys, Balkan Arctic here and in today's video we're going to be taking a very simple and basic roof construction and I'm just going to be showing you how to model all of these elements in Revit, how to set them up properly and some tips and tricks along the way of how can you just do this uh, properly so you can then have calculation of how many elements do you need for that roof. So we're just going to be looking at all of the all of the basic roof elements that are required for a timber wood construction and that then we're just going to be modeling all of that in Revit and putting it together to create this really cool wood roof construction. Uh, now before we get into that, if you're really serious about learning Revit and especially if you're really interested in roofs in Revit, I actually have a whole dedicated course just on roofs in Revit. It's going to be the first link just below this video. Uh, there I think it's like seven hours, I take the extra time to just go step by step, show you how to create all sorts of complex roofs in Revit, how to create these compound roofs in Revit and then finally I go in depth on the construction as well and also in the and as a little bonus, I show you how to create these cool 3D shingles, which I think it's uh, quite fun. Uh, and also there I have many different courses and many other Revit courses. Uh, I've got over a hundred hours of content and I'm adding more each month. So make sure to check it out if you're interested, just the first link just below the video. Uh, also, you can check out my Patreon page if you want to get this project file as well as all of my other Revit project files. That's going to be the second link just below the video in the description. So check that out as well if you're interested. Uh, finally, make sure to subscribe, like and share this video. It helps me out a lot, helps promote the video to other people that might want to see it. And without any further ado, let's jump straight into Revit. And here we are in Revit. So let us get started by going straight into models. Then I'm going to go to new. And for the template file, I'm just going to be choosing my custom Balkan Arctic template. And if you want to check out my templates, you can find both of them on my website, balkanarctic.com. That's going to be the third link in the description. So check it out if you're interested. Anyways, let's just click OK and let's let Revit start right up. So as soon as Revit starts up uh, to create this roof and to show off all of the roof elements, we have to start off with some sort of a building. And just to keep it simple, I'm just going to start off with four simple walls by going here to the wall tool. Uh, let's use the generic 400 millimeter type. And the only change that I'm going to make here in the properties is instead of unconnected, I'm going to change the top constraint to go up to level two. Click apply, uh, go to the rectangle drawing tool and then let's create a roof or create a house which can be, I don't know, 6 by 10 meters. I think that's uh, an okay size. Hit the escape key a couple of times. I'm just going to move it, perhaps center it a little bit. There we go. Okay, so once we have this, now it's time to create our roof. Uh, so to model the roof construction, usually it makes sense to start off with a roof. So for that, let's go to our project browser, uh, go to our level two, because the roof is obviously going to be on level two. And now it's time to draw the roof. So for the roof, you just wanna go here to the roof tool. I'm going to go with roof by footprint. This is going to be a very basic roof. Uh, you can use the pick walls tool. I prefer this method. And also it allows me to assign an overhang. So I'm just going to give it a 0.7 meter overhang or a 70 centimeter overhang just like so. Now something that you'll notice is a lot of these lines have this uh, little triangle which means that this has a slope and we only want slope on the sides and not in front and back. So I'm just going to select these two just like so and then go to the defines slope checkbox and uncheck that. Uh, now when I hit finish it's going to look like that. So if I go to the default uh, to the quick access toolbar and open up the default 3D view. It's going to look like this. So we have just a basic roof. Okay, moving forward, uh, let's go back to our level two. And now it's time to start modeling the construction. So for the construction, what you wanna do is uh, you wanna go here to the structure tab and then you want to go to the beam tool. So for the beams, I already have them loaded in. As you can see, if I go down here, I do have some timber beam beams. If you don't have them loaded in, you can always go to load family and then you can search for them. So for, to find timber beams, you just go here to structural framing, 
here we go you go to wood and then you should find it there here we go so I already have it loaded in because I'm using my template which includes that which is useful <laughs> anyways so uh, let's go and pick out a beam here so uh, for example now we want to uh, pick out a wall plate uh, uh, for our wall that's where kind of the roof meets your wall and for that I'm just going to be using one of these uh, let's go with this one 140 by 140 uh, millimeters I'm just going to click on that and to place the beam just come in here as you can see it's going to snap to this end point go to the other side and there we go uh, now the issue that we have here is the fact that we cannot see our beam and we don't want that we want to see it so uh, the first thing that we have to do is change the detail level so you have to go here to the detail level change it from coarse to fine now you can see the beam but we still cannot click on that beam if I try nothing happens so what you want to do in this situation is you want to change the view range settings so if you go here to the properties panel by default the view range settings are going to be off uh, for this type of work so I just want to go here to the view template uh, uh, or not the view template sorry uh, the view range here we go view range go into edit and then just change the bottom to unlimited as well as view depth to unlimited click apply okay and now we cannot see it at all <laughs> well the reason for that is uh, because uh, now uh, it, it, the roof is kind of covering that and the easy way to fix that is to select just the roof right click go to override graphics in view by element and then when this menu pops up you just crank the transparency to something like 70 click apply okay and now we can see the beam and more importantly we can click on it and edit that so what I want to do here is just click here and change that this to zero so it goes all the way to this side and then on the other side I just want to extend that beam so it goes all the way to this side actually now that I think about it I wanted to go to the edge of the roof yeah just like this uh, now to, to double check everything you want to go to the 3d view so I already have it opened up here and now if I look at this beam we have a problem it should be sitting on top of the wall not below it now this is actually an easy fix we just have to select the beam uh, go to our properties scroll up a little bit and then here we have the geometric position and on the Z justification that's kind of the vertical justification it's set to top so if you just change that to bottom and as you can see it's just going to pop up like so and this is exactly what you want to see okay so once we have created one beam it's very easy to go back to level two so click on that beam go to copy uh, then click somewhere in the middle and then just drag it over here to the middle and there we go now we have two beams that are kind of holding this roof in place and we have our wall plates so these beams are called wall plates or this framing is called wall plates the next step is to create our rafters so rafters follow the the roof they're going to go like this perpendicular to the uh, wall plate so for those rafters what you want to do is first go to the beam tool and you just want to double check the dimensions so here you can see I have an issue because my uh, my existing uh, my existing uh, beams don't really match anything that I could use for this so what I'm going to do is just select one of them for example this one go into edit type and then go to duplicate now you want to duplicate it and you want to keep it uh, a little bit thinner so for this I might go with something like I don't know perhaps I'm going to try 80 millimeters by 140 or perhaps even 160 could work okay and once I've set this up I have created this new type I have to change the dimensions here so B is the width so that should be 0 0.08 making that 80 millimeters or 0 0.08 meters and this one should be well it should be 0 0.16 okay so that matches now this click OK and now we have created a new beam notice how we have the previous one but we also have the new one that's why we use the duplicate okay so once we have that beam in uh, created then you want to go back to the structure tab and instead of using the beam tool you want to use the beam system tool now this is what's going to create your beam system so you click on the beam system tool and then you want to set your work plane so you assign the work plane by going here to set work plane you click 
you pick a plane and then you want to pick one of these angled planes so the inner side of this roof once you have done that you want to define your boundary so you can do that by using the pick lines tool uh, you come here you find the center line you find the edge you find the edge the edge here there we go and once we have something that looks like this you just use the trim and extend to corner the R is the shortcut you fix it here you fix it there and that's done and then finally the beam direction this is indicating the beam direction it's usually the first line you click now in this case it's definitely not going to go in this direction so you want to fix that now you can click here and then you can either use pick lines and then pick a line like so or you can actually sketch it by going here to the middle and then sketching it out like that, hit finish. And now, as you can see, we have those beams. Now, we do have an issue with these beams. So uh, main issue is that these uh, beams are too far apart. So when you select this beam system, uh, here in the properties panel, you get some uh, options for the pattern. So currently it's set to fixed distance and that spacing is set to 1.8 meters, which is way too much. So you usually wanna go to something like, I don't know, like 75 centimeters or 0.75 meters. And then that would look like this. Now this makes a lot more sense. Also here you can set up the beam type. Uh, so the, the actual beam that you wanna use, as you can see by default, it figured out that they wanna use this one. So that's what it set it up as. So that's good, uh, that's useful. And that's it, and you can play around. You can try 0.7, see how that looks. I'm actually going to go with 0.7 on this one. There we go, okay, perfect. So once we have that one side created, you have this little, see that this little icon that appears? It says this is disassociate work plane. That means that uh, the work plane on which, which we use to host this beam system is no longer going to control our beam system. The reason for that is because if I select this roof and if I move it, Let's try that again. Okay. Okay, it doesn't want to move for some reason. Let's try giving it an offset. Okay, there we go. So as you can see, the beam system follows that. So I don't want that. So let me go back again. Okay, so I want to disassociate that. So you click on the beam system. See, when I highlight over it, at some point it's going to highlight like this. It's going to say structural beam system. And that's when you want to click to select and then you get this little icon, you click on that and now it's disassociated. So what that means is if I now go to, I don't know, let's try South Elevation. See, I can see it here now. Uh, just make sure to go to detail level to change it to fine so it looks like this. Uh, and also you wanna select this roof, uh, right click, override graphics and view by element, and then you wanna make it transparent here as well. Yeah, like that. Okay, so now finally I can select this beam system. So not the beam, but the beam system that's this dashed line. See how here it says structural framing timber and here it says structural beam system. So you wanna select that and then you can move that. So I can go here to the move tool, I can click wherever I want and then I can bring it up like so. And now I can bring it in the proper position. And obviously you can move the roof uh, to match that or whatever you wanna do with the roof. So you can offset this by I don't know, 0 0.1 if you wanna move it up slightly. Something like that, there we go. So we can have an additional layer below this and so on. Uh, but it's really useful to have this ability to adjust uh, the, the roof uh, uh, separately from the beam system. Anyways, now let's select this beam system that we have created. Uh, we can go to the 3D view and the next step you wanna do is you wanna mirror it to the other side. So for that, I usually like to go to the site plan like this, uh, then I go to the mirror, uh, pick access, make sure that copy is selected. You click here on this line. And now if I go back to the 3D view, now as you can see, it should have them on both sides. Now the issue here is that in 3D view, we cannot see our beam system because of the roof. So you wanna select that same roof again in this view as well, right click, override graphics and view by element. And uh, yeah, you guessed that we're going to be cranking up the transparency here. Apply, okay. And now we can see both the roof as well as the beam system.
Okay, so once we have the, the, the beam system, which is basically rafters, the next step is to add the ridge. Now the ridge, I want to make it a little bit thinner than the beam system, and then also I want to have it a little bit taller than the, than the rafters. So to do that, I have to go again back to the beam tool, uh, go here to the timber, this one, edit type, and then duplicate this one as well. And this one is going to be 60 by, I don't know, something like 200 to 50 perhaps. Yeah, let's go with that. Uh, click OK. Uh, then you want to change this as well. So this one should be 0 0.06 and then this one should be 0 0.25. Click OK. Now once you have that, you, it's easy, really easy to place the ridge. So the ridge is the one that goes here on top. So you just use the pick lines. You kind of go down, find this line here. So the bottom of the roof and you click and it's going to place it like that. Uh, now this obviously doesn't look correct. So what you want to do is go to the elevation, for example, and then you can actually set up the cross section rotation. So once you place a beam, you can go to the properties and then here you can set up the cross section rotation. Now you can notice here that this beam follows the this edge of the roof. And if you remember from the beginning, this roof is at a 30 degree angle. So hopefully if I just write uh, right here 30, it's going to, well, it's almost got it right. It should just be minus 30, I guess. And there we go. So now it's set up vertical. So once you have that in place, then you can go here to the Z justification and then you can flip it to the bottom. Okay, this might be a little bit too high. So actually we have this offset. So let's try minus 0 0.05. And I think this is perfect. Okay, that was easier than I thought. And now we can go back to the 3D view and then this is what that looks like. So here, as you can see, we have that ridge on top of our uh, rafters. Uh, now to hold everything together, you need to add a joist. So that's a piece of wood that goes from here, kind of from this intersection between these two beams. And then it goes to the other side to the same intersection. So to create something like that, uh, what we need to do is we need to create a new reference plane. So let's go here to the south elevation. Uh, and then you want to go here to the reference plane tool. And you come here on top of this beam and then you place a reference plane, just like so. We can extend it on the other side as well. And then for the name, we should definitely name this. And then the name can be, I don't know, the joist host. Hit enter. And now once we have that reference plane, uh, we can go back to the second level uh, floor plan. And then you can zoom in here. Now I like to start just from a one side like this. Uh, and then for, for this, you can choose, what, you can either go here to beam and then you can create a new one. Or in my case, I'm just going to use this one. I think it's perfectly fine for, for this task. So click on that. I'm just going to go from this edge here. Now, sometimes it's not going to snap, which is really annoying. So I want to go from here to there. But before I start placing it, I'm just going to go here to placement plane and set that to joist host. You go from here all the way to the other side. The escape key a couple of times and there we go. We have the joist host. Uh, now you can use the align tool. AL is the shortcut to align these two just like so. And there we go. We have the host. Uh, we have the host. We have the joist. <laughs> now we can go to the 3D view just to see what that looks like. And obviously it's going down. We don't want that. So again, you probably know at this point, you should go back to the properties panel, back to geometric position, back to the Z justification and from top set that to bottom. And now it's in the right place. And there we go. I'm quite happy with the way that this turned out. Uh, now, obviously this should be repeated. So to repeat this, what you want to do is uh, just go and, uh, well, let me show you what I like to do. Uh, I like to come in here and just select one of these. So just go like that. Let me try. Okay. Let's go like this. Now I like to hold the shift key and remove the ridge and then also remove the wall plate. 
So we only have rafters on one side selected. So I just held the shift key to remove. So see, when I hold the shift key, it shows that little minus sign. Anyways, uh, once we have selected this, now if I go here to filter, it's going to say that we have structural framing or joists. We have 17 of them. So that means that we should repeat this or we should have 17 of these as well. So with that information, I can go back to level, uh, level two. I can click on this. I can go to the array tool. A number should be 17, obviously. Move to last. You click here. And then you just go all the way to the other side here. And it's perfect. As you can see, we have 17 of them. If I go to the 3D view, this is what that looks like. And we have our kind of completed roof. It looks good on both sides. And I'm quite happy with the way that this turned out. Uh, now, one quick tip uh, in the end, something that you should probably know about, uh, and uh, it's something that's not quite common, and that's how to fix situations such as these. So somewhere, uh, in some cases, you might have these situations where the, the beam goes off to the side, and let me perhaps demonstrate here. So let's say that this one, if I go into edit group, and if I extend this a little bit, let's say it's going off like this, and you're not happy with the fact that it's going past this uh, this beam. So how do you fix this? Well, let me show you. You go to the south elevation, or actually in this case, this is the north elevation. Do you see that one? Or no? Or is it the south? Let's, let me just check here if I move this to fine. Yeah, it's this one. Okay. So I'm just going to hide the roof for a second. So just go here, hide element. Okay. So this is going past. So what do you do in this case? You just go to the architecture tab, you go to reference plane, you place a reference plane like so. So uh, it's basically following the outer edge of this beam. And then I have to go here into edit the group to edit this. Uh, you just go to modify, you go to cut geometry, you click here, you click on the reference plane, and as you can see, it's going to cut that. And now if I finish, it's going to kind of finish and just transfer that to the others. But there we go. So, okay, edit group, yeah, finish. Okay, there we go. So uh, as you can see, this is how you can make a cut that kind of follows that. So if you wanna uh, fix things uh, like so, just use a reference plane and then you just cut. Uh, now in this case, it might take a bit too long to fix all of these. So I'm just going to leave it as is. Uh, and if you're required to show it or to present it in such a beautiful fashion where you require that, feel free to do so. And in most cases, that's not going to be necessary. You're doing this just to show the construction to the, you know, to, the to whoever is going to assemble it and also to calculate all of the quantities as well as costs. So there you go. I hope you have learned something new. We have covered a basic roof construction that, uh, that has a uh, wall plate that also has uh, this rafter, it has our ridge, and also it has a joist. So that's how you create all of this. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you have enjoyed it. I hope you have learned something new. If you want an entire uh, course dedicated to roofs, that's going to be linked in the description of this video. So make sure to check it out. That's the first link. It takes you to my website, balkanarctic.com, and there I have many more courses. I've got over 100 hours of content on Revit. Uh, so there is something there for everybody. So feel free to check it out. Okay, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe, like, and share this video, and I'll be back soon with another Balkan Architect tutorial. Thank you for watching, and have a nice day.